Hey y'all, it's me, it's the Andy Comic Book Guy, and today we're going to talk about the next Batman Future State issues 1 and 2. I really wanted to like this book. I really wanted to give 12 years a Batman slave a try, so I was mute for issue 1. Didn't say a word. Didn't say nothing. Now that issue 2 has arrived, I have some notes. Now, if you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and like this video so that your voice can be heard and we can have discussions in the comment section below because, well, there's a lot to talk about. Now, the next Batman Future State issues one and two, this will be a spoiler field review. So if you don't want to be spoiled, just hit that pause button, come back, read it, then come back, play the rest of the video, and join the discussion. Issue 1 starts out with Batman doing typical Batman stuff. He's chasing after a thug who's done some very bad things. However, he's also saving him by telling him to take off his mask before the mask-hating peacekeepers get a hold of him and kill him. Then we cut to the Fox family home and Luke Fox is coming home from a long night and bumps into a young hottie sitting on the couch. Plot twist, that young hottie who looks around the same age as him is his mama. I mean, I know black don't crack, but like Martin Lawrence would say, damn, Gina. Like, really, she looks the same age as Luke Fox. And we're kind of led to believe that Luke Fox is the next Batman, but DC has already spoiled that months ago, and everybody knows the new Batman is Tim Fox, his estranged brother. Yeah. Worst kept secret ever. Anyway, we find out that Luke's sister, Tamara, was in a mysterious accident, so she's laid up in a coma. Luke goes to see her and runs into, oh, guess who? His estranged brother, Tim Fox, who most comic book readers have never heard of and haven't seen in decades. Oh, and he also calls himself Jace now. So everything gets super awkward between the brothers and Tim bounces. He's like, yo, I'm out. We cut to a scene where there's a couple cops talking and some kids are getting involved in a gang who looks like they're cosplaying as Bane. So that's a thing now, right? The big reveal is we see this other group who have these polygon masks, which apparently can fool the facial recognition AI in this future state. So that's cool. I wonder if the Batman suit has that same technology. We don't know yet. Now, this whole issue is kind of blah. Blah, 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 blah. And read like an indie comic made in the basement of some just generic guy who's like, I want to make a comic book, but I don't know how. That's how this kind of read. It really read like an indie comic by someone who has never written a comic, never overseen the art of a comic, and never had someone edit the comic. That's how the next Batman issue one read. However, I did enjoy the Outsider's backup story more than this. And after reading several Future State comics, I can say that probably... I'd say a good 65 to 70 percent of the backup stories are better than the main stories, and some have better art. That's crazy. Now, the art on this book was not consistent, and it went from okay to being very bad real quick. The lettering was all over the place, and there was nothing in issue one that made you come, want to come back for issue two. There was nothing. There was no real antagonist set up. I know they were like, oh, the magistrates and the peacekeepers who are apparently the same group. They have banned uh, people wearing masks, so I guess that applies to superheroes and villains, and Bruce Wayne is dead. That's what we get. We don't get no main bad guy that made an appearance. We just get pretty much rent-a-cops. 
That's all. So it's nothing really to in issue one to make you want to read issue two. Anyhow, let's talk about issue two. Do we really have to? Yes, we do. Batman. Wait, can we go back to calling him Black Batman? I kind of like that. That was fun. Anyway. Batman finds a dead body and decides to check the security footage in the building next to where the guy was murdered in this alley. People are always getting murdered in alleys in Gotham City. When would they learn? Like, really? Alleys are a bad place. He even says that the cops would be there in two minutes. And then, next thing you know, cops are there in less than two minutes. And he gets in a fight. And... He just runs away from the cops. He actually pulls out a cell phone and takes a video of the security footage before he leaves. But there were just like four cops and Batman freaking ran from the cops. He ran from the cops. Four cops and this is Batman. Keep that in mind. So he goes outside and sees more cops and he throws a batarang at them because, you know, that's what Batman does. Then he realizes that, oh, they have body armor and that's not going to work on them. So he runs away again. Is anyone noticing the trend here? This new Batman just keeps running. Maybe he should be the Flash. He runs a lot. So one of the cops shoots Batman in the side and Batman throws some tear gas or whatever so that they can't see him. Get on a motorcycle. And guess what he does? He runs away again. And then he throws the phone. Because apparently in this future, Batman has a burner phone. And he doesn't like using technology. I guess the, so they can't pinpoint him or whatever. But everyone knows cell phones have GPS systems built into them. Like, Batman, how do you not know this? So he gets rid of the of the burner phone, and of course, you know, the peacekeepers are still after him. And I get confused in this story. Like, you have cops, then you have the magistrates, and then you have the peacekeepers who are, I guess, like the more heavily armed version of the magistrates. So anyway, Batman ran away again. We cut to his mom, She's screaming at the mayor, and this time she actually looks like an older woman. She doesn't look like she's in her mid-20s. And she's pretty much like, hey, y'all are going too far. And the mayor's like, hey, your husband, they're the ones that, you know, made this contract to bring the magistrates here. And it's your technology that killed Batman. And now we have this new Batman running around. And you're saying you don't want us to use this technology to kill him? She's like, no, I want him dead, but I don't want you to use, like, big guns to kill him. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So we cut back to the lady cop from issue one who's either going to end up being Tim Fox's love interest or a lesbian. And I only say that because lately the trend in the last couple of years is to make most female characters lesbian for some reason. Anyway, it's just weird. But she's just fed up with these magistrates. So we kind of get a hint that she's probably working with this new Batman. I mean, it's kind of obvious by now because while he was busy running around on his motorcycle running from the cops, he was talking to someone. We didn't get to see who, but I bet it was her. The issue ends with Batman finding the two people that killed the guy from the alley and he don't kill him. He don't hurt them or anything. He's about to, you know, like, go out John Wick on one of them, even though he's hurt. But then they pull off their hoodies, and it's a married white couple, and they're like, don't hurt my husband. Well, the wife's like, don't hurt my husband. We killed him because he killed our daughter. And Batman's like, oh, okay, but you still killed a guy. And they're like, but you're Batman. You would do the same. So it's this whole little back and forth where he just lets the guy go. And they're just all standing there having a chit-chat. They might as well have tea and coffee and just like, oh, let's talk about morality and ethics. But then the peacekeepers come. 
that's the end of the issue. Yeah. That was the end of issue two. And what's odd about this Batman, Tim Fox, is one while he's talking like, you know, a stereotypical black dude as far as his lingo. And that may turn off some people. That may turn off some people who aren't from that culture or don't understand some of the the jive, as they used to say back in the 70s and whatnot. And then the next while, he's talking like he's a cop, talking about perps and stuff like that. So I don't know what the deal is with this Batman. I do know that slang in comic books just never really ages well. And that's going to be a problem going forward. It's already been announced that John Riley is going to write a 12-issue next Batman Second Son miniseries. So hopefully some of the issues are corrected. But judging off these first two issues, there's nothing for people to come back for. They failed to do two things which people love from any genre. Establish the hero as someone that you can relate to, you care about their plight, something. What's his motivation? Can't just say, oh, his motivation is vengeance. His motivation is justice. No, we need more of that to continue to want to read about this story. Also, again, there's no established villain in this story. There's nothing here really that's going to separate this story from any other story that you read on the rack. There's nothing. There's nothing for a reader to want to read more about this character. My main issue with Black Batman, and I'm calling him Black Batman simply because I feel that there's a greater injustice here, not just in this comic, but also with a lot of comic books featuring African-American characters. One, bad art. Bad art. And I know people are like, what about Spawn? Really? We've talked about this before. Most people don't consider Spawn an African-American character because you can read 20 or more issues of Spawn and not know that he is black. Despite the fact that he has the powers to, hell, kill God, kill Satan. Like, really? You can read, go 20 or more issues of Spawn and not know this. Now, this is a serious problem with black comic book characters getting their own series and having bad art attached to it. Comic books are a visual medium. People want to see good art. They want to see good storytelling. They want good writing. These two issues, uh, they suffered in all of those categories. Even the lettering was very amateurish. Got a little better on issue two, but not by much. There was nothing compelling about issues one and two of next Batman to make you want to read them. Heck, even Wonder Woman. Just want to briefly touch on this. Uh, What's the new Wonder Woman's name? Yuri? I think that's correct. Uh, People love that issue. They love that issue. You go pick up Immortal Wonder Woman. uh, People have mixed reactions to that, but... Guess where Nebula is thrown into a backstory? Like, backup story. It's like, and that story was just kind of like, what? What am I reading? There was nothing there that really made you want to read more about this character. So you had three Wonder Woman, Wonder Women running around, and of course the black one gets nothing. She's an afterthought. Didn't even deserve her own book. She's an afterthought. Who is busy fighting somebody. It's like, oh, well, you didn't even moisturize your hair. Like, what? This is really happening? Uh, Batman, Batman, Batman. Even the Bruce Wayne Dark Detective book is just awful. It's bad. The Luke Fox and Grifter story in the back of that is even better than the main story. Future State is all over the place. It's like failure state. 
That's what we should call it. So if you're looking to read this next Batman story, I wish you luck. Maybe you'll like it more than I and I liked it. I don't know. But there's nothing in these pages that are going to make you want to pick up the next issue. It's, the story's really going nowhere. Batman's just kind of there. You really don't get to see Tim Fox that much. And, hell, his mom might be the most interesting <laughs> character in this story so far. At least she has a story arc. At least she has a story arc. Anyway, on a scale of one, I guess, on a scale from one to ten, I'm going to give this story a four. Mainly because we don't even get to know who Batman is. The writing is subpar. The art is subpar. The lettering is subpar. The editing is subpar. Forget it. We're just going to knock it down to a three. Issues one... Issue one gets a three. Issue two gets a two because all Batman did is run. Run, run, run. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And I'll keep you posted on Batman, next Batman Second Son when that comes out. Hopefully, we'll enjoy it more. Please don't tell me there's couple more issues of this next Batman I gotta read through because unless a miracle happens I see a sharp decline on sales I see a big decline I predict it anyway I'm not any comic book guy see you in the next video